What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. As you're probably aware by now, if you've been looking at the markets over the last week, it feels like it's up, down, up, down, up, down every single day. And that's because we're in the quadruple witching week. This particular price zone is incredibly important and we've already detailed some of the key option strikes that we need to be looking at. In today's video, we're taking a look at the NASDAQ, S&P 500, Tesla, AMC, Apple, Gold, and of course the volatility index itself. There's a lot to cover and there's plenty of great information for you in this video. Stay tuned guys. Okay, well here begins our market recap for the markets closed 15th of September 2021. And when we take a look at this chart, you'll notice it's a sea of green, very little down on what was a pretty nice rally in the market. We started weak and then we rallied through. Microsoft, of course, up 1.68% based on its buyback. Uh, sneaky, sneaky Microsoft ruining one of the technical shorts there for sure. And then we have Tesla. It's like it's almost well-timed, hey? And then we have Tesla coming out with some nice goods, 1.52%. I think that's very exciting. Oil also spiking, and that's got a great technical on it. Maybe we'll take a look at it through today's video. Let's move over now to the actual indices. You'll notice almost every index was up around 0.7 to 1%. They all rallied throughout the session, rallied into the close, and really only the morning had the dive. So this was another retail trap because, of course, Wall Street sold it in the morning, rallied off the lows. We'll take a look at the NASDAQ. A very key support was not broken. I'll show you how to spot that in the future. And then, of course, it went through and got much, much higher through that session. When we take a look at the sectors, no surprise, oil out in the lead, XLE up 3.73%. It was always going to have a strong day off the back of very good US oil movement there. And the rest of the market was kind of lackluster in the middle. It was just really about those oil stocks. If we take a look now at the VIX and get into the technical analysis, here's the volatility index. You'll notice when you take a look at this chart, it's basically stuck within a range. We got just above 20, but we've talked several times about the only way this VIX is going to spike is if we get underneath the 50 EMA on the S&P 500 daily. If we don't get underneath the 50 EMA, it just isn't going to go really, really, really high. It's pulled back significantly. We're back down to 18 and we're at a key resistance now coming into the Thursday session. So in your comments down below, what do you think the Thursday session is going to do considering we're at resistance? Is it going to continue to go up or is it going to go down? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you're a new time viewer, consider subscribing as we always bring in quite a lot of content uh, to everybody here on the channel. We hope you guys enjoy it. Let's move over to the big elephant in the room. And that is, of course, the quadruple witching event on Friday. We have stock index futures, stock index options, stock options, and single stock futures all expiring at the same time. And this leads into the shenanigans that are going on in the market, the manipulation. Why is it down, 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 up all around this 20 exponential? Because this is a true war really from the perspective of Wall Street. Wall Street want to make optimum money. When you have so many options expiring, there's a lot of money on the table. And we'll be talking about those key levels using the SPY right now. So you'll notice the SPY, the S&P 500 has come right back to this 20 exponential moving average. And if we actually go down into the one hour chart, which we'll be doing later, you'll notice it's back on that kind of level that has always been quite a good sell zone over the last three sessions. You've had gap rise, filled the gap, gap rise, filled the gap. And this is the first day we've actually risen back to the same zone. But I'll be explaining why 450 is not really a zone that Wall Street will want to close it on. Let's do options to talk about that. Here's the chart. What do we see here? Wow, green lines. Look at this. We have uh, detailed this one quite a lot. The 450 strike is absolutely hammered by retail. Retail are buying huge here. I'm sure some Wall Street guys are buying options here, but there is so much money on the table sitting at the 450 level. Then we've got that 455, 460 level. It's calls. It's a call bonanza. And then we talked about, of course, the 440 level being very even with the amount of puts and calls there. So we like, if we could make optimum money, where would Wall Street want it to close? right in the middle of these two zones. If they could close the quadruple witching event right around here, they will make optimum cash. Everything here will expire worthless. Everything here will expire worthless. 
and they will have massive smiley faces and they'll go into the weekend eating crayfish, lobster, crawfish, whatever we want to call it. They will be very, very happy. I think we also can then look at the strikes coming in for October. We've talked about the volatility at this time of year, and we've also talked about the fact that, look, we have to always be optimistic on markets. But one thing we won't ignore is when we have huge amounts of calls sitting at strikes. Why is there so many calls sitting at 450? And why is it that everyone seems to be so bullish at this level, particularly retail? I think this is kind of like a little bit of a trap. We've seen about two weeks ago, a whole bunch of put options being put in by Wall Street all around these levels here. And we've got great bases that if the market is to fall, we can look for buy the dip scenarios using what we call put walls, which is where effectively if these puts are in there, the market will generally stop on these levels and we'll have what we call technical support. So really options is telling us quite a lot about the market. We'll move over here to Yahoo options as well. And I just want to detail this 450 strike on the calls just so you guys can see it. So here's the 450 strike, 179,000 units sitting there. Now, if we think about that and everything around it, it really puts in perspective how many people are dumping this psychological zone. They're buying that thing. They are 179,000 deep. Now, if we scroll down and we look at the put side of things and we scroll all the way here, to the 440, what you'll notice is that there's a decent amount of puts coming into it, but where are the predominant amount of puts around the 440? Again, showing that trapped zone coming in the quadruple witching event. If Wall Street wants to make the most amount of money, you know where they finish it, right in this area that we're stuck in right now. It just makes a lot of sense. It isn't always gonna happen, but remember when we can bring together our technical analysis, which is we're trapped in a zone, and that we can bring together the options and the expiration dates, it can make us a more powerful day trader, investor, etc. It also makes more sense, and that's something that a lot of people like to uh, you know try to get out of the market. Making sense is good. We'll move over to gold here quickly. We talked about yesterday being a relatively bullish close there, and it was for a scaling position. We got stopped by the 200 moving average here on the daily. And I think 1810 is the next strike off if it is going to go to that 1820, 1830 zone. Where it is right now, if you notice, it's all around the bodies. So this is really that level where the bulls and the bears are fighting it. I would hope that it goes up, but it, we don't know whether it will. Of course, gold has been very manipulated at this time. If it does ever close underneath 1782, well, it's going back down, I believe, to the 1760. So I'm still relatively optimistic here on the charts but I'm certainly not buying this zone. I think the only area that some people may have scaled in is around that 1803. And I'll say it, that's not a bad level to scale in on, but I think scaling is the key here. You shouldn't be full position because it just wasn't enough information. And that's why I always say scaling, scaling, scaling. A lot of people down in the comments, let us know if scaling has been helping you. If you reward the trade as it's making the higher highs and the higher lows in the direction that you want it to go to, you see key levels being broken off and then you add to those positions, you'll generally have a much better time. And more importantly, your psychology won't go down and you won't do the nasty revenge trades that many people get stuck into. So just remember that it is pretty important. We'll move over now to Tesla. If we take a look at the Tesla chart here, we've got a very nice trend line we've discussed. We have great follow through yesterday. Very happy with this daily close actually. And I think when we look at the heat map here in terms of options, you guys are gonna see how amazing some of these levels have become. So we've got resistance, resistance, support, 20 moving average, massive hammer there. We've had that slight sell off followed by a bullish close. Oh, Tesla is just, it is looking better. And you guys know I haven't always been the biggest bull on Tesla from the price action standpoint, but over the last couple of weeks, I've really seen a turnaround here in the price action. And if this can close a strong weekly, let me show you how important this weekly is. Nothing has closed, closed above the 745, 740 zone ever since we got that crash earlier in Feb. If we get a weekly close specifically above this 765, that really brings in participation. And I think it could go ballistic. And of course, retail could be behind that. Let's take a look at the options flow because this is where things get really interesting. 700 is a hotly contested strike this week. But what we've actually seen happening is so many calls getting loaded by somebody into 
this period here, the October period, we've got 44.7 million net positive flow on the 700 strike. There is money, big money somewhere in this Tesla right now and, and people are going crazy for it. Algo flow was with it as well, which is great to see. That means that all of the options flow, all of the uh, Wall Street kind of big movements, they were all going with price. That is what we want. And if we have a look here at the next kind of stocks, you'll see how it can be a little bit different. So Tesla's still looking fairly positive here on the charts from a price action standpoint. Move over to Apple. We did detail this one in the live stream. We talked about this level being a bit of a scalpy short zone at the open. It certainly was. I hope a few of you, if you did get into that one, were nimble and quick as you've got to be if you're doing shorts and you got it uh, down to that low. There was some good little time frame there on the 15 minute. You can go watch our live stream yesterday near the end if you want us to, uh, if you want to have a look at what we we're talking about there. Then we have the big bull up and just like we're going to see in the indices, Apple is again at roll reversal. Previous support becomes resistance, becomes resistance. 20 exponential on the one hour. If it's going to short, it's going to try to short off this zone. And at the time of this recording, the indices are down about 0 0.06, 0 0.07 on the previous session. So you can see that the market's having a bit of a breather after what was or what did look like a pretty good rally. So we'll take a look here at the flow for Apple. And I think overall the flow really came in near the end of the day. Look at that massive amount of buying that happened into Apple's back end. We'll see how this floats through. I mean, that's pretty bullish into the price, but again, it just kind of caught up with what was going on. So it was a lot of retail purchasing and that looks like at the end of the day, really Wall Street came in with some large uh, positions. Let's move over now to AMC and we'll take a look at this. We have previous resistance acting as, of course, support. We had these lines from the live stream. We got very lucky that we predicted and picked this 52.30 zone together. Obviously, a great resistance that we found here. Long Leg Doji confirmed it was an indecision. It sold off and now it's fully reversed. And we haven't altered any of these lines. We've had them there for quite some time. But check out this. We have a pin bar bullish hammer rejection right here. And guess what? If it closes above, what's going to happen? Well, if it closes above, we've got that nice pin bar rejection. The top is very close to the 48.11. So if we see follow through, so if we see that kind of movement of price coming back up through the high here, then we could really be looking at further momentum into the 5235 again. And then if we break past that, then we start talking about 60 territory. And I know a lot of you guys will be excited. So yeah, it's good price action here on AMC. If we take a look at the flow itself, it was pretty much with price. So I don't think there's that much to go around. It was up, down, up, down, up, down. But realistically, close enough. It's not massive change or massive negative on the, on the flow score. So I think that's okay. Let's take a look at IWM and get into the indices. We take a look at Russell 2000, came off the 220 support that we knew was there. We expect kind of the Russell to hover between 220 hit maybe 224 maybe stick within this range for a little bit if it does close above the 224 then we start talking about 230 again and uh, look it's the same levels we've always discussed underneath this 220 closure then we move down to the 210 and really it's it's as simple as that there's 210 if we get underneath here and if we get above the 224 again this high then we start to talk about 230. And it, it becomes very clear when we look at the actual market indices. So let's look at QQQ to get started. Let's go down to the one hour chart here. And actually the four hour chart is probably the best one to start with. And we see here that it's rejected very strongly. That is a pretty good candle to the bull side. We've rejected once, we've rejected twice, we've rejected three times. We get that stop hunt basically that convinces people we're going short. And we'll show you how you probably shouldn't have done that using the futures market yesterday. And then it bulls up and it hits straight into the resistance. We've seen sell off quite a few times. So let's move over to the US 100 here for a second and let's take a look at this chart. So this is where we've had some interesting gaps. We obviously gapped up earlier this week. We sold off straight into this low, 15,360. Then we gapped up again, we sold off into the low. Now these futures, so you won't see the gaps, but both gaps happen here. Futures market rallied and then it sold off. Previous support becomes resistance. Then we get that fake breakout. Now we always talk about confirmation is the key. So let's go down to the one hour chart here and I'll show you what I mean. We get underneath 
but we don't confirm with a big enough time frame. We've seen rejections before, we've seen rejections before. This is a classic stop hunt. So effectively what happens is it sucks people into selling, it then creates a bullish hammer, another rejection week with that second rally down that traps more people into selling. And then if you wanna trade this type of thing, you're looking for momentum to get above here. So basically price must move through. You don't necessarily need to wait for a close, but what you do need is you need momentum. The price has to continue to bull up here. It did, and then it rallied straight into our resistance. Great take profit for day traders, and it's really along the lines that we've been discussing recently. Be nimble, be fast. This is a week of random manipulation due to a quadruple witching event and just in general uncertainty in September. We know September tends to be volatile, so that's why we're sitting here. And we expect to kind of be floating around here, maybe degrading a little bit ahead of the open. If you're looking bullish, then what you're looking for is bam, bam, and then movement back up into the highs. You can see it clearly, resistance, resistance, resistance. If we close above resistance, that resistance will become support and provide uh, great opportunities there for getting out of this effectively channel or range. If you're a bear, all you're looking for is down below 15,360 and that should present some nice selling. In fact, I expect the VIX to really spike if you get underneath that zone, a key area for us to be looking at for closures. Similar on the US 500, here's the box that we've been drawing for the last couple of sessions. Very similar type of price action down the low here. Rejection, 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 a triple rejection here on the one hour. There's the resistance. We get that follow through. You start to scale in, you start taking your positions. And you again have a very clear take profit zone right at the resistance here. Fantastic. I think a lot of people in the Discord community got hold of this one as well. So congratulations to them. And we've got our clear levels. We know that if we get underneath this zone down here, this 44, uh, 40 zone then we should move towards uh, you know further lows and that wall street would actually love to trap it within this area remember when we looked at the spy options calls and puts if they could leave it in this area for expiry they will have smiley faces because they'll be making the most amount of money possible closure above here similar to the nasdaq you're looking for that kind of movement get outside of the range it's bullish action straight away you know the bears have been completely destroyed at that point and we move back into talking about all-time peaks for uh, obviously the 4550 resistance and then possibly even moving to 46. So it, it's a critical zone. We're recognizing the market very well right now. And uh, hopefully you guys are starting to see why you've got to be nimble and quick if you want to be a seller or buyer in these current markets in September. Let's move over to a market that makes a little bit more sense. And that's probably the Bitcoin market. If we take a look, it looks similar to a Wyckoff accumulation. We talked about this in the uh, video yesterday and the live stream. We got a randomized, of course, stop hunt here. I think that was really an excuse based on that Litecoin Walmart news. It was uh, very sneaky and we'll, I'll show you how clear this becomes in a second. So we actually like this pullback. If this does occur like it's happening here, then this previous resistance zone of around 47.2 should act as support. So we should really see some buying pressure off this zone, hopefully, or at least some consolidation here. And I'll explain why using our Wyckoff accumulation chart. Do you see the similarities, guys? Look how similar it looks. We get that initial sell-off. Let me go to a different colored pen. We get that initial sell-off, it spikes underneath. It then spikes down again. It rallies. It spikes lower, but not as low as the initial one. We get that in massive bull run. And then we're here right now. We're above the previous resistances. And then we're pulling back into this zone. Ideally now, we create this consolidation and then move into phase E. Again, I'll scroll back over to Bitcoin so you can see it. See how it looks so similar. This has happened a few times now on Bitcoin. And that is clearly a great example of maximum pain theory where they've got that extraction. They've scared everyone here. That's taken out stop losses that don't know what they're doing and then it's moved it straight back up. So really all I'm looking for in the crypto market right now is for Bitcoin to solidify a good price action standpoint. It, you know, if it does bounce off this area, we're looking for it back into that 50, 51, 52 range. Um, I'm excited if it can do it. We're looking for a little lightning bolt here. If you're not already in this type of trade, that's the type of way you're looking at it. And if it can consolidate and move up, 
you know, there's, there's some good rallies that could be coming over the weekend here for Bitcoin or indeed into the debt ceiling discussion in the US. So there's a lot of things that are going on there. I want to remind everyone, because we always bring this chart up, that we're in seven months of potential gains here on the S&P. We're still mid-month September, so anything can happen. It's unusual to go that much over seven. These are actually all the dates that that's ever happened. And it, during that next month, if it is weaker, we tend to then see another follow-up of kind of lackluster results. So that would be the October session if it does occur. But just remind you, 93% of the time or 92.9% of the time, gains happen over the six months after. The market is an optimistic beast and you should always be on the side of the bull. And if you're gonna take the bear side, you need to be nimble and quick. It's just really tough to, to be in there for a long time being bearish. You'll usually get cut up and that's not good for your account either. Let's take a look here at core retail sales that's coming out and we'll be live streaming this one hour before the market open. That'll be a big bit of news, probably a catalyst to push it from that resistance either down or up. And then of course, Friday will be huge manipulation due to the quadruple witching event. So be careful out there, guys. It's not for the faint heart of this week. And hopefully we get some clear direction on that range that we currently have on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, guys. It really helps us out. And put in the comments down below, what do you think Thursday session is going to bring us? Bull or bear? What are you? Bye for now.